fish, a round fish. Marmalina, the marbled ray, flew from the sea surface to the underwater mountain where her friends played. Martino, the hammerhead shark, and Tanito, the white-tipped reef shark. You mean a puffer fish? Corrected Martino with expertise and flair. No, it's not a puffer fish. It's a round fish. Marmolina waved her wings as she swam around them and opened her eyes with a frightened face. A green jack? Tanito asked. Ah, jacks are not even round. Can we at least eat it? Tanito was starting to get a bit hungry with such agitation. I don't know. I don't think so. All right, so I'm not interested. But it looks like he's in trouble, insisted Marmolina. Maybe we should go help him. And what do you think so? Was he screaming? Was he in pain? Martino asked. No, he doesn't say anything. But he's floating, most of the body outside, and it moves very ugly with the waves. Is it belly up or belly down? A very important detail for fish. They only go belly up if something very bad had happened to them. I don't know where the belly is. Did I tell you it's round? But it's all pale, like painting. The three friends stared and thought. Swam and stared and thought again. We're getting nowhere with this discussion. We'd better go to this weird fish and see what's happening to him. Swimming playfully, Tanito and Martino went behind Marmolina among banks of hundreds of other fish that frolic around the island. Soon they spotted the round fish floating with almost the whole body outside and swinging with the waves. Hello, fish! They yelled at him from a cautious distance. He didn't say anything. What's, What's your name? name? He didn't say anything either. From up there, among the flashes of the sea sky, all you could hear were the splish and the splash of the water playing with the air. They came closer, little by little, to see him better. He was really, really round and white, somewhat dirty and scaleless, rather with barely noticeable ribs forming little squares around his body. And when they looked closer, they noticed he had something like a pair of cup handles. Only there in the sea, no one knows what a cup is let alone a handle. Look, he's got an eye on each side, just like Martino, but no tail. That's it. It's a fish hammerhead balloon shark. Does that even exist? Poor thing, what an ugly name. Tanito dared to tap him with a fin, and it made a hollow tuck tuck sound. It's a clam with an upset stomach, a closed sea snail, a coconut coral. But what is he doing up here? Those creatures always live at the bottom of the sea. They stay around for a while, Marmolina sometimes jumping through the air to see him full and trying out names to see if he responded. Fat tuna, delfang, floatiful, handily, snaily, they shouted at him but nothing they said could get him interested in the conversation. I bet he got mad at those names you're calling him, complained Marmolina. Maybe. What I do know is that we don't know who he is or what he is or what's wrong with him or anything. We'd better ask an adult. And so they did. If there was one thing about Marmolina, Tanito, and Martino, it was that they always agreed and everything really quick. They came back to the underwater mountain, and they searched for Don Mazo, 
the oldest and most serious and wise hammerhead shark in the entire marine conservation area of Cocos Island, which, to spare themselves the trouble of such long names, they call the sea. Don Mazo very calmly settled the giant glasses from side to side of his big head and interrupted them once he realized that not even half a fish was coming out of the stumbling description by the three friends. Is it round? Yes! Does it float without splashing or doing anything? Yes! And does it have something like a pair of hollow eyes on the sides? Yes! That's it! That's it! What is it? My young friends, that's a buoy! Oh, a boy! Well, he sure doesn't look like a girl. Poor little one, all alone in there. No, it's not a boy. It's a buoy. Uh, all right, a uh, uh, a buoy fish? No, a buoy, just a buoy without the fish thing. And don't go there any more. It can be dangerous. Buoys sometimes have hooks dangling from invisible wires and nets that can suddenly tangle you up before you even know. Good thing you guys are okay. But just in case, you stay right here until your parents arrive. I never thought a boy fish could be so bad. It didn't look like it. Danito secretly wiped off the fin he tapped it with, hoping it wouldn't give him an underwater cold or something like that. Booey, booey, that's no fish, clarified once again Don Mazo. I'm going to call the park rangers. They can always help with these things. The park rain what? Marmolina, Tanito, and Martino's astonishment fluttered in their heads like butterfly fish. The park rangers. They're like dolphins, but very big-headed and hairy, with their noses pierced in the middle of the face. They swim quite badly because they have feet and hands instead of fins, and they live out there on the island. They're like those who sometimes show up with tangs and stuff on top because they need air all the time, and they get cold in the water and they can't see well. And when they come to the bottom, they go by throwing away that pile of bubbles. Oh, grass, bubbles! screamed the friends in chorus. I'd rather get a kiss from the bat fish. In any case, they're about the nicest people there are. They patrol above the water, and they don't let the fishermen come around here too often with their buoys and their nets and hooks. The fishy what? The fishermen. Those are other dolphins with legs. At lunchtime, they're like us. They love to eat fish, but they seem to go terribly hungry because sometimes wherever they go, they come and take away a lot. But how are we going to call the rangers? Oh, that's very easy. You will see now. Don Mazo went to the bottom, grabbed a rock, not very large, dropped it on an oyster. The oyster said, ouch! and let a little bubble out. The bubble went up and out the water. A thousand green jacks quickly gathered and made a big swirl around it. The swirl said, The little bubble reached the surface, and when it exploded, it said, Loop. All this fuss attracted some dolphins. The dolphins jumped on the jacks and over the water, and some seagulls flying by saw them. The seagulls began to fly up and down in circles. Then one of the rangers on Cocos Island peeked out the window, looked at the sky and said, It's time to go for a round. He got on his patrol boat with a couple of mates, and they went out to do their round. Along the way, they found the buoy and put it in the boat. Marmolina, Tanito, and Martino 
who in the midst of so much communication had sneaked away from Don Maso, saw the buoy floating up there in the distance for the last time, and then disappearing through the air. Goodbye, round fish. Have a good time.